Hi, my name is Aryan Itashami, and today I will present my project for ECE 6397 state space estimation with physiological applications. This is the data science project where we have focused on the nonlinear Bayesian estimation of lithium ion battery degradation. We will discuss the current state of battery prognostics and why it is actually difficult to do this task. Um, we will also touch up on previously used methods um, in regards to estimation techniques and the current attempts of dealing with uh, the nonlinearities of battery systems. Uh, following that, we will go through the results of this experiment and uh, the future contributions that should be made towards this sort of research. As of recent years, there has been a huge demand for novel battery systems as the market is going towards a more green and energy efficient market, which include the medical, aerospace, automotive, and more. So much that the battery market value is expected to reach $40 billion by the end of 2020. For this presentation, we will mainly focus on space applications since the data set used for the experiment is provided by NASA. Batteries are heavily used in the aerospace industry. A good majority of the devices within the ISS are battery powered. The ISS itself has battery systems, and many extravehicular systems will require a battery system. Given the harsh environment of space, batteries are placed through very stringent tests to examine the behavior of the batteries and any measures needed to ensure safe usage. Given that most future missions will occur deeper into space, the need for proper battery design is cardinal. This is because any backup unit will take time to reach the payload and data transfer for ground monitoring of the systems will be lagged due to the distance. Also, improper battery designs end up costing more since there will be more trips to the ISS to replace parts, which affect the transporter's fuel costs due to usage. In order to provide flight-approved batteries for missions, engineers must prove that the battery is safe for use through stringent flight-like testing. However, the metrics needed to provide this proof cannot be physically measured, hence the need for data-driven and model-based prognostics. Prognostics is an element of system health management that predicts the time when a system is no longer performing nominally. The time at which this failure happens is called end-of-life, and predicting the time it would take for the component to reach end-of-life is known as the component's remaining useful life. These two metrics are the more common ones among others. For this project, we focused on estimating the end of useful life and the end of discharge voltage. The data set used in this project is available online for free, provided by NASA's Ames Center's prognostic database. The batteries here were lithium ion cells that were placed through about 200 charge, discharge, and impedance cycles to show the aging effects on the batteries. Here, we have plotted current on the right hand side and voltage on the left hand side. During charge, the current was held at a 1.5 amps constant current so that the voltage increases up to 4.2 volts. Once it reaches 4.2, it is held at constant voltage so that the current tapers down to 20 milliamps. Once it reaches 20 milliamps, a discharge cycle starts, which then the current is held at a constant current of 2 amps until the voltage of the battery comes down to 2.5 volts. Here, the colors represent the aging of the battery. Orange indicates the battery going to the very first cycle, black indicating the battery going to the very last cycle. As you can see, the newer the battery is, the longer it takes for it to charge and also discharge, while the older the battery is, the quicker it charges, but also the quicker it discharges. We can see the temperature differences as well for an aged battery. The older the battery is, the quicker it heats up, as well as the quicker it heats up during a discharge. All of this is due to the resistive buildup in the battery over time. If we were to plot the discharge cycle of the battery, uh, we can see the following plot for the voltage. Here, the right-hand side of the plot shows the very first cycle, and the very left-hand side of the plot shows you the, age, the very last cycle. You can see the colors getting darker, indicating that the batteries are getting closer and closer to the end of life. The OCV RC model is a simple equivalent circuit model that is selected to approximate the electrical performance of the battery. It consists of three parts. One, the open circuit voltage, or the OCV, the internal resistances representing the ohmic resistances, and third, the capacity of the battery. This model can capture the battery dynamics and can be easily implemented in the real-time application. The RRC model can be represented with the following state equations and output equation. 
in our state equations, our input is the current into the battery, and in the states we're tracking are the state of charge and the voltage across the capacitor. The values of the resistances and capacitors come from a uh, voltage di discharge impulse that we can see on the bottom left-hand corner. As we know, the linear Kalman filter iterates between two steps, the prediction step and the update step. In the prediction step, the Kalman filter predicts the new values from the initial value, and then predict the uncertainty in our prediction according to the various process noise present in the system. In the update step, we take the actual measured value from the device of the system and then calculate the difference between the predicted value and the measured value, and then decide which value to keep, I, for example, predicted value or measure value by calculating a common gain. This output from the update step is again fed back to the prediction step and the process continues between them two. Going into more detail, we can see that the UKF is a bit more computationally intensive, but the overall concept is still the same as the common filter. We start by computing sigma points, labeled as chi. Generally, the point of 2n plus 1, where n equals the number of states, is used to calculate the number of sigma points. Kappa is a scaling factor, and P is a covariance matrix. At the same time, we can calculate the weights of the sigma points. Note that the sum of the weights must equal 1. Once we have the sigma points and their weights, we can feed them into the state prediction, where we can use our state equation to perform the nonlinear transform in order to compute the new mean invariance of the approximated cost. Now that we have the predicted mean and covariance, we can use the nonlinear observation model or in our observer model to transfer the state space to the observer space. Here we can calculate the measurements mean and covariance. The main difference between UKF and KF lies here in calculating the common gain. To do so, we first need to solve for PXY, the cross-correlation matrix between state space and predicted space. Finally, we compute the new states and covariance before reiterating the group. Looking at the two plots, the orange line indicates the measured values and the blue line indicates the estimates from the UKF uh, filter. You can see that for the most part, both filters uh, have been tracking the measured values very nicely until the very end where they start to diverge away from the actual measured values. Uh, this is due most likely to the fact that the uh, model parameters the resistances and the capacitances are not actually changing over time as they should be in real life. Uh, ideally, they would be changing per the temperature of the battery and the capacity of the battery. However, it does look like we can get a good estimate of when we can expect a EUL or a EODV. As well as the equations on the bottom indicates the fact that the capacity at end of useful life is usually set around 80% of your uh, capacity at 100%. The next step in this project will be to use a higher order ECM model to capture the battery's behavior even more. This will include to the use of an expectation maximization algorithm, or EM for short, to be able to update the model parameters and the states at the same time. In addition, we can introduce the use of electrochemical models to help us uh, infuse the chemical behaviors of the battery in our state equations. Lastly, we would like to actually transfer these techniques into a battery pack level as that is what is going to be needed in the end when the battery design is actually completed.